Hello YouTubers, uh, today I'm going to do a video on how to replace, how to take off a clutch on a Husqvarna 350 chainsaw and also show you the differences of how clutches are designed on Husky and also on different chainsaws and also I'm going to give you a bit of a shop update. Let's go with the shop update. Uh, I only have a few more parts to go on the uh, Husqvarna 350. Uh, today, I just received the clutch removal tool and the and some new bar nuts because I lost the other few bar nuts on my 394 and they're pretty much the same same thing. And um, also the muffler on it. Unfortunately, I don't have the muffler screws, so I had to order those. And those should be coming sometime in next week. Also coming in next week should be a new clutch and also rim sprocket for it, which the rim sprocket's a lot better than a spur sprocket, and also the bar and chain, which then makes that saw complete. Plus, the next project that I'm going to be working on is going to be a Husqvarna 288 XP chainsaw. It's a, it's a large saw, of course. It has an 88, 88cc engine displacement. It's an older saw, and this is going to be a crankcase rebuild, straight from the crankcase. I just ordered it today. It's uh, including the crankcase, crankshaft, bearings, flywheel, the, the bearings, and uh, crankshaft run fine. Pretty much it's from that point up. It is going to be very, it's going to be costly, plus also it's going to take a lot of time due to the fact of the cost of the parts. I'm going to be making quite a few installments of the video, but let's get back to the main topic of this video. Now, removing the clutch is a, is a great deal, is part of maintenance for a chainsaw. Uh, it's just one way of, you know, getting through getting to different areas of your saw so that you can clean it out make sure everything's okay and also inspect the clutch and see if it's in good shape or not. One way of noticing that your clutch is not working right is if you start up a chainsaw, you t disengage the chain brake, you let it sit and if the chain is still spinning that's one way to tell that the actual clutch is worn out. Now, in, with some saws, removing the clutch can be easy or it can be difficult. I'm going to show you one example of how easy removing a clutch can be. So here, let's take a look. As you can see here, this is my steel 025. It's a 44cc chainsaw, so it's a mid-ranger. It's a nice saw, made in the early 90s. And as you can see right here, after taking the spur sprocket off, this is the actual clutch. This is the clutch itself. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. Now as you can see right here, there's a bit of an indentation out where a socket can go right onto this clutch and all you have to use is a piston stop And in most cases, you go, let's see, it's a reverse, it's a reverse, it's a reverse thread on it. So this can actually come off with a socket, a spanner, but lots of times with these clutches, if you have not taken them off, they get stuck on there pretty bad because even just tighten these things a little bit. And then when you start the saw, start and stop it with the blood, with the with the chain break and stuff like that, it causes this thing to tighten up pretty good. So, one thing I would definitely would recommend is I would recommend impact socket, impact wrench, because it's really, really easy to take these things off. But one thing you want to be careful with is you don't want to you 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 don't want to put too much emphasis on the impact wrench because you don't want to strip the you don't want to strip the threads on the actual sh crankshaft itself. This, like I said, this is what we call the easy, easy way of installing it. There's no special tools or anything like that needed to do it. 
Now if we take a look at my Husqvarna 350 chainsaw, as you can see the actual clutch itself is built differently. There is no, ind there is no indentation for a sock to be put onto this thing. Now to actually remove the clutch itself, you would need an actual special clutch removal tool. And this is one right here. Now these tools can vary depending on what kind of depending on what uh, manufacturer chainsaw you have or even what particular model you have. I know that with Husqvarna there are different clutch removal tools with Poulin chainsaws there are different styles of these clutch removal tools. Believe me this is the only right way and right and safe way of actually removing these things. As you can see it's got indentation here where I can hook it up to a socket wrench or anything like that. Plug it into a socket and remove it there. But one thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to remove how to remove this socket, how to remove this clutch. Because one thing we're going to do is we're, we want to inspect this clutch, see how it looks, and then we're going to um, disassemble it so that we can inspect it and see how the needle bearing is. If the needle bearing's okay, then that'll be great. If not, I'll have to replace that, which I really don't want to. Now, of course, one thing to do is when you remove when you're removing clutch of any of any chainsaw is one thing you have to do is you have to wedge something in the piston in the cylinder so that when the piston goes up it ca it catches on something so that it does not complete what I call a cycle where the piston goes up and down because you're not you're not going to be you're not going to have any kind of, you're not going to have any way of actually you're not going to have anything to sort of grip this and actually remove this so let me just sort of back this up a little bit. Now as you can see right here I already taken the top cover off. I'm going to remove the spark plug. I'm going to use my spanner. Take off the spark plug. Once I'm done with that, you can do several. You can do several methods to actually plug up the hole into the cylinder. One way of doing it is using this piston stop that I have right in my hand, or you can use a nice, well-made nylon rope where you can stick it as much as you can into the cylinder, and then eventually it'll plug up it'll plug up the cylinder and you won't have to work and you'll have enough grip to be able to pull this thing off. But personally I like using the piston stop because unfortunately in one of my previous videos I'm working on the 394 Husqvarna I used a piece of I used a piece of nylon rope which a piece of it was actually lodged into the The piece of it was actually lodged into the was enlarged into the cylinder wall, which was not very good because it revolved and involved a busted piston. So it's all set up here. As you can see, I do have a bit of re resistance. All I'm going to do is. I'm going to apply pressure and as you can see the clutch came off. Sometimes these come off easy, sometimes they come off hard. It just really all depends itself. 
and now we can take sprocket off. As we can see right here, the actual bearing itself is uh, kind of rusty. Luckily all the bearings there are in still in good shape. This is a spur sprocket. You can tell by the spurs around here with the rim sprocket, the spurs are gone and the spurs are actually replaced by little by little metal disc. I have one here to show you. This is the actual rim. This is a rim sprocket. These little spurs are actually honed down a little bit. Spur sprocket floats on here like this, and it actually has a more of an up and down movement to it, which is a lot easier. Now, in this particular case, and how this how this chainsaw looks, if you're looking. Zoom in on it a little bit more. I am definitely going to, and this is the Euler worm gear right here. I'm definitely going to probably get some uh, automotive grade sandpaper, sand this down, drop the bear, drop the needle bearing into some uh, card cleaner, try to get all the rust and stuff like that off of it. Once that's done. I'll probably cover this in lithium grease and it should be good as gold because as you can see right here it just it, it was pretty much rusted on there so it really needs to get work done but as you can see right there that is how you remove a clutch off a Husqvarna 350 chainsaw I mean it's very very self-explanatory as you can see right here you got these two spaces right here. Clutch removal tool. We'll go in to these spaces right here. And you can see the dial where it says off. You turn it in that direction and luckily it spins off. And one thing also to do is if you wanted to make sure if your clutch is in decent shape, check these springs out. If you see any kind of cracking or anything of that nature, I would highly recommend replacing the springs. But one thing I noticed with this, this saw has been sitting for a while, so I will definitely just replace this with a brand new clutch and be done with it. The bearing seems to be okay. Like I said, let it sit in some carb cleaner and it should be all right. And put and always, before you reinstall your clutch, put a little bit of white lithium grease on it. You can get the lithium grease at any auto parts store. Works really good, keeps the bearing nice and smooth so that you get some really good action out of it. Well, YouTubers, done with the video. Hope this is a little bit enlight hope this enlightens you a little bit. And believe me, there's gonna be some more videos to come. Y'all take care.